welcome to episode 117 of the In General Podcast. My name is Caleb. I am joined by Jack. How's it going, sir? Hey, how's it going? Beautiful intro. <laughs> I'm also joined by Ryan. What's up, man? And we were joined by Ryan, but unfortunately his audio was lost, so we have edited around that. And Samantha. Hello. And last but not least, Assis. Good to be back. Good to be back. Love to see everyone here again. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, did y'all know there's a new Jurassic World movie coming out? What? <laughs> this you is know brand what? new information. Yeah, it's literally all I'm thinking about. When I'm in the gym, I'm at work in my office, I'm like, you know what? What's this movie going to be about? I'm just sitting there thinking in my spare time. And you know what? That makes me real excited. I haven't felt that way in many years. I love it. I love it. I love it. I, I have to admit, <laughs> this went... When they first announced the new movie, I was at the bottom. You know, three movies in, I was I was pretty. The bar was low for me, and I wasn't really um, wasn't really wanting another movie. And then as soon as they announced Gareth Edwards, as soon as his name came into it, I was pulled fully back in. And now I'm excited, and I can't stop smiling <laughs> thinking about it because the prospect You're done. You're finished. of the way that we thought about Jurassic Park four before Jurassic World came out. No offense to it, like, this isn't about like whether you like Jurassic World or not. The way we thought about Jurassic Park 4 feels like what Gareth Edwards kind of interpreted with a lot of Godzilla. And I hope Gareth's mind and his head, and I hope David Kep's mind and her head are still there, because I, I kind of want to go back to that time. But anyway, we can, we can, we can get into that. <laughs> 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 I think they, they tested the waters, didn't they, in, in, in Fallen Kingdom and Dominion with sort of like the human clone. And at the end of Dominion, you've got a lot with the name uh, Maisie. Lockwood's daughter, Maisie? Um, Charlotte. 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 <laughs> yeah, I think they interesting stuff. I think so. Yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Jurassic yeah, World Charlotte. War is very muddled in my head. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I'll, is, right? I'll take a Ridley Scott Jurassic movie. Yeah, the thing is, what you said about the, the, were there any you know test subjects of the human hybrids? Of course, there would have been, right? The same way, mm -hmm. naturally, we would have, you know, to assume they probably bred a bunch of dinosaurs that were horrific, like really yeah. scary, uh, and 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 you know, just probably made a lot of the scientists think we got to stop. But whatever, that's a really interesting path to go down. But the idea of like one of the islands that we haven't been to was a dumping ground for these human hybrids <laughs> that failed. Oh, and now they're just running wild and maybe that's the concept that would be that i mean oh, that's about like a spin-off idea dude <laughs> yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah lab. yeah and the thing is we know they've teased the idea I've, I've been i've been trying so hard to find a copy of the jurassic park 3 dvd i don't have one with me here and then i also don't have a computer with a disk drive because they don't exist anymore so i can't <laughs> You know, I'm trying to get the old teaser posters for JP3 because only some of them are online. Um, but I've been going through them all and finding there were so many made with like a human embryo <laughs> in the logo. Mm. And oh, I yeah. really want to know what the concept was, why that was playing into the logo. Was that just freedom of like the designers, like let's play without any story concepts? Or was the original screenplay that we know had a lot to do with breakout the dinosaurs getting onto the mainland in some way was it was it deeper than that or was it more like it's the threat to the humankind in some way and there's shadier stuff that's going on it's just those there's like four of them with embryos not just one you know yeah um i love I think it. i love it yeah, yeah imagine it. imagine seeing that in a cinema like why is there a baby a dead baby yeah. Jurassic Park? <laughs> it's very 2001 a space odyssey honestly yeah like mm. really creepy a bad decision or yeah maybe but with the yeah. title extinction that was playing around as well that makes me think that maybe there was more to it maybe this was something to do with like maybe they maybe, i don't know maybe the d the whole dx um <laughs> not virus the dx infection. yeah virus <laughs> yeah i don't think it is i don't think it was a virus it was Oh, okay. Um, well, <laughs> whatever the DX, maybe that was like playing into an early drought or something. But either way, they've definitely played with the idea of human DNA, human origin, something to do with an embryo. Um, so it makes you wonder if David Kep has been going back over some of the old ideas. Maybe he like had a couple of the JP3 drafts like long before. Alec, maybe he you was... know, who wrote the JP3 screenplay, the one that got thrown out? Was it Peter Buck Buckman? No, I think Peter Buckman, Alexander Payne, and someone else got the final credit. 
Uh, the original script was written by I don't remember the name at this point. I swear it was Bookman. Apple. Peter Buckman definitely has a credit. I should, you know what? This is when I need Jaden. I need my other JP3 boy with me because I feel like if I don't know a JP3 question, I've failed <laughs> yeah. my, my, my supporters out there, my family, my audience. I feel like I've <laughs> let down everything. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. I don't know the answer to this. It's it's rattling me. I'm rattled right now. If, for those who can't see it, which I, I guess is everyone who's not on this pod, um, Jack is like rummaging. He's trying to look for the answer, and he's pulled out a bunch of papers. Oh. There he is. He, he's got the script. There Peter Buckman, it is. But this, I don't think this is Jim the breakout Taylor. one. This is the two, this is the, how do you, how do you date? Month first. This is the first of September. Thousand. That draft, whatever <laughs> that one is. Um, but it's not the mainland one. Do you guys remember? I think it was So what is the date? What is the date? Yeah, what's the date? 22,000, right? First September, of September. Unless oh, okay. a Brit wrote the date. Well, that, we know that script didn't go fully into yeah. production anyways. You guys remember um, back when JP4 was coming out? There was a rumor about, not even a rumor, it went pretty far in production and like pre-production to the stage where the dinosaur toys got made, the super dinosaurs, remember that? Before the hybrid? Yes, yes, yes. That was a thing too, remember? There was concept mm. art, there was toys and everything uh, made for it. So I, I, my mind keeps going to two rumors, specifically back in early, I think early to mid 2000s when we were talking about Hammond's granddaughter slash daughter potentially being played by Kira Knightley as a, a potential rumor casting for yeah. way, way back in JP4 days. And my mind keeps Love going it. back to these super dinos with the G.I. Joe kind of thing, because that was we, far enough The military along. thing does yes. keep coming up as well, yeah. And we do know that we yeah. haven't really seen that yet. The in-gen stuff wasn't exactly like the G.I. Joe action, so I figure that maybe that's the direction that they're going back in, maybe combining the two scripts. We know that Cap has been involved with Jurassic Park behind the scenes forever, right? So it's not like he's been there since day one. So he knows that he knows all the ideas that were pitched originally, all the ideas that were thrown out. I guarantee that they're going back to something that they've already thought about, which is why they're bringing David Kep back in specifically. Yeah, Maybe yeah, it was yeah. an idea mm -hmm. that he had originally pitched or changed up for JP3, JP4, something like that back in the day. And they're going to go back and revamp that for modern times. I think that's why we're I will talk about it soon, the, the Hammond granddaughter rumor or daughter rumor. And uh, I think that's why we're seeing a lot of these old threads kind of come back now, especially like, the, I mean, well, whether we want to believe it or not, there was already a rumor about a dino human uh, subplot. And you know how I feel about that. I'm, give it to me. Give it all to me. So Dino human serum or something. Yeah. Despite everyone saying it's not going to happen, the rumor did come up and say what you will. The rumors, you still have to give it some some bit of you still have to taste it a little bit you know what i mean take your salt with it but uh <laughs> give it a taste i see um, i think uh one of the points you made there about how the jp4 idea we know for a while taking away the die who was it die who hogs die who dogs yeah die who hogs or something yeah. the, the human dog dinosaur hybrids you know those fellas um though if taking them aside and that screenplay aside there was the big concept for a long time about making the dinosaurs like they've evolved into these ferocious scarier mm -hmm. stronger and there was yeah. concepts and even physical figures made that were the next jurassic dinosaurs which were like t-rex on crack it was just like a kind of more <laughs> and you guys can actually find like this a... online yeah, yeah, we like have a T-Rex with like eyebrows. It has like three fingers. It's a little bit longer arms. It Ryan is shaking his does. head in disgust. <laughs> uh, Ryan was one Triceratops, which was more like monstery. It was. It had kind of like a. I guess like Turok would be the way. Like the way the dinosaurs are a bit more like bloody. Like they've always got blood around them. It kind of confirm now, part. Jack, that this movie is going to be a Turok movie, a Turok Jurassic action movie. Well, my point was, there's some of these JP3 concept posters which I keep bringing up, um, and there's one that says the tagline, right? What didn't kill them made them stronger, and I keep thinking there's no oh here about like, <laughs> evolving, and but it makes me think maybe. Maybe back then, what we were supposed to have happened was like the dinosaurs were supposed to have like evolved on their own and become these even more. Like maybe it was being played. The thread was in put the in there for JP3. <laughs> but think, but seriously, it's think about that playing with that idea. Because because it's like we always say for Jurassic World, oh, it sounds like Crichton. It sounds like Crichton, but really it's a load of shit. But the like in <laughs> this idea of like the dinosaurs wouldn't just continue to exist and breed. They're genetic modifications and weird like they've been brought back to life in a really weird and bizarre strange way and they were already showing like deterioration signs at least in the novel of being like some of them are like shredding and like becoming very strange and behaviors are being affected too if jp3 and jp4 were going to tackle like the dinosaurs are like 
fucking up like there's something wrong with them and they're, they're like getting worse and more aggressive and there's something strange that That's then cool. sort of bleeds into the idea of like we've started something and now it's like in the it's in the what do you call it like the, well now it's now it's uh, all over the world if they're exactly. gonna have these to issues the mm -hmm. now it's now they're in a well, lot of places i was thinking back then it sounded more cool like after lost world that's kind oh, of oh like yeah a, sure that's a that's a kind I'm, of spooky i'm way. saying like, like dinosaurs were cool in lost world they were going to survive and it's like now they're now they're just like something <laughs> is going on anyone that goes in there is going to get this disease or something you know that's a good uh, idea i, know, man, I, just, I like, like this is all good like, stuff scary and it puts but, up a real threat instead I'm of saying, like, oh, dinosaurs since, are broken out. And look over there, you know. So, <laughs> since we've now figured out, about. since we've now figured out the plot of Jurassic World Four in our discussion here, um, like, and if David Kep is working with, uh, he's listening, past, like past ideas. You know, there are a number of fans. Um, I, th I mean, I don't think all of the ideas we've just talked about are terrible. I mean, like. If you, <laughs> Injun has created these things. Ryan doesn't want any part of Actually, they're terrible. Ryan, what do you, what do you, what do you want in this movie? What do you need? What do you need for you to be happy? Because I want. Ryan yeah, to come be on, happy pitch us a movie. If you, if you think, <laughs> no, no, just, think, just tell me what element. What do you need for like? Because I've been thinking about this too. What do I really want in a Jurassic Park movie? I just want dudes running around, or dudes and gals running around, and you know what I mean. I just I want mean, dudes. I just want. Dudes. I, mean. I want. I want human dudes. beings. Guy and gal running around, sure, throwing a kid or two in there too, because that's gonna be there's gonna be a guys kid, being dudes. Movie. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> Throw them in the jungle, have them run around, have them look at like cool old buildings. That's all I want in Jurassic. <laughs> Ryan, what's the thing you want? <laughs> yeah, come on, Ryan. How many dudes do you want in your Jurassic? <laughs> God damn. Shirtless, crop tops, like, muscle tees, yeah. yeah. a bunch of jacked yeah. up, roided up, on TEDs. <laughs> Think Predator, but like in Jurassic, like if I don't see a scene of two guys, one of color, of one of white, doing this scene from Predator, like the fucking bicep scene, if they don't do that, I don't want my I want my money back. Yeah, yeah. That's my Jurassic. I like that. Oh Caleb's got one. Okay, there it is. I want one too, I'm not gonna lie. I no, you know one. he's not extinct. He's yeah, it's, it's legit. He's he's Jurassic. Dude. <laughs> Live action Skinner and stuff like from the kennel line, the evil raiders. And... You never know. We need that. a movie like Small Soldiers with those yes. toys. And one yeah, of those yeah. human hybrids, that Scrap Davis, that could play into it. Maybe that was one of the uh, Maisie Lockwoods. <laughs> mecha, mecha freak coming out in the jungle. Like a little mini Maisie. Yeah, yeah, they've all got. <laughs> He's putting too much real life into this now. <laughs> Can see the oh, Jurassic Park three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you see the fucking the tug of the, the shirt. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think that um, <laughs> yeah, the yeah. folks who the trades and the people who it, I mean, at least from my perspective, I feel like a lot of the like Hollywood news sites, whenever there's a new Jurassic movie involved, every time they say. Are there going to be dino human hybrids this time? Are there going to be dino human hybrids this time? I feel like that is for some reason perpetuated and I don't understand it's it. Colin's fault. But because he set that yeah. up in Fallen Kingdom, it was like Maisie, don't you know what Maisie is? <laughs> and they reshot that scene as well. But that's not what Maisie is. <laughs> yeah, but actually she's not. I still so firmly believe there's some dinosaur in her. I I, I believe this. I believe this. And I you know what? That I'm not, pig's I'm not... raptor. <laughs> you know what? I'm not Maisie. I don't think that's how she was able to outrun the indirex because she no, whatever, dude, i'm Indo not even kidding like i don't think we've seen the last of Maisie and, and beta i don't think so there's a reason like eventually whether it be a cartoon or something we're gonna <laughs> see, see Maisie and beta together we there's too much potential universal is not stupid like you like that was a but popular what do you thing do with Maisie going forward like how how do you dude, utilize her? How, like, what what's the most need? what's mm. the most iconic part exactly that's true yeah that's a I really think... good idea, actually. And having the actress, I forget her name, voice her. Yeah, I don't, well show would be really cool. I don't see anything moving forward with Beta necessarily, but Maisie, yeah. I mean, I, feel like I didn't even think about Chaos whole... Theory, though. That's awesome. The fact that they set up that whole, like, eyes on me thing, and, and like, Beta had this connection with Maisie, I, I, I think Universal did that on purpose. That's sure, like, but it lasted like three seconds. True, but you know what they're gonna do in like five years? Maybe because Maisie lives near Beta's like home, right? So eventually, maybe 10, 15 years down the line, we're gonna have like an adult Beta and like 
an adult Maisie running around the world doing dinosaur adventures as as like the dino duo. I'm That's telling you, it's going to happen. With a crime solving duo of Maisie gonna, and Maisie. The most iconic <laughs> thing in Jurassic World, for, like the entire thing from the franchise, has, is the Owen hand to the Velociraptor, right? That's like the, oh, probably the most yeah. iconic thing. That, so dude, they're gonna they're gonna milk that aspect. They're not gonna put it in the movies. I think so. I disagree. No, Fair. I think if you ask anyone, like Jurassic, if you think about Jurassic World, everyone would probably say like, "Oh, yeah." The, the Chris if Pratt, you posed it like that, if you posed it as well, like, but then everyone could, would complain about how like, "Oh, how come Chris Pratt's doing this to every dinosaur?" That was like a complaint in Dominion. He's like, "Why is he doing this to the two big ones?" I'm like, "See, that's like everyone notices. That's his thing." Jurassic World is this, the hand movement. <laughs> That's his legacy. It is, I'm we telling you. Talk to stop, the hand. Stop, <laughs> Please, <laughs> please stop. Those two giant... I, I mean, I think, I think everyone knows how I feel about the Jurassic World trilogy, but if I could replace Chris Pratt with someone else, I oh would. God. Josh Brolin. <laughs> Josh Brolin. Remember Josh Brolin was going to be the lead? Josh Brolin was going to be Owen? I remember that. I remember, Um, what's the... He went into rehab was the story. Who was... And then... Who is the other? The who is the other actor that was in the running for it though? Um, John the Krasinski. Hunger Hunger Games guy. What's his name? Garrett Hedlund. Josh Hutcherson. Yes, Josh Hutcherson. He was in what? the running as well, wasn't he? I I didn't know. I know Jake Johnson. I, Josh for one. I remember. Yeah. Those are the <laughs> those are the two I remember are Josh Brolin and Josh Hutcherson. Those are the two. Josh Hutcherson. Are you sure? I'm oh, not. I guess I'm not a hundred percent sure. Can but... I just say? I mean, he was in Journey to the Center of the Earth, though, so that was already like that's a, a dinosaur. dinosaur option, maybe. Yeah, I still, I think at that time when you were still cast him was like uh, he was too young. That, that. If you guys remember back in the initial report before mm -hmm. Jurassic Park Four Jurassic World got delayed, the initial casting was Garrett Hedlund for Owen, Bryce Dallas Howard for Claire, and then David Oyelowo for Barry. Who's Garrett? Garrett. Oh, okay. Garrett Hedlund was in uh, Tron. And then a bunch of other crap after that. Oh, Tron Legacy, sorry. Yeah, really? He, he was. Uh, oh, he's so in Triple Frontier. Memory. Triple Frontier was that Netflix movie, which actually wasn't bad. With Benjamin somehow. Affleck. Yeah, and, and it had uh, really nice jungle shots in Hawaii that felt. You know, if you I like that movie, if you want like jungle military guys, Assis, If you want men going into the jungle. <laughs> no, I've I've already watched <laughs> Triple Frontier. Movie. Guess what? I watched it <laughs> while I was in training with my army buddies, and guess what? We loved it. We were flexing. We were loving it. It is actually a really good movie. I like it. When you, uh, and I really when you're like the with, you, you know how it is, Ryan. When you're, when you're with the boys and they're all jacked up, like, Rah! you know how it is. You get an insight <laughs> to what happens in the lives Canadian, of men right now. Canadian military. <laughs> this is, a, this is what there. military dudes actually just get jacked up on like other jacked men. Like, yes! that's, 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 yeah. All right. Um, cool. Garrett Headland, I didn't know that, but yeah, I can see why they would go for him. Josh Hutchison. No, I swear that must have been like, he went for like Zach or someone because he, he's, he's not even tall. And if he's got us, but not that that's a problem, guys. Calm <laughs> down, Jack. Like, Jack, you hide out your Jack's like, yeah, like, Ludlow. Jack's like, he's what, not like tall, six, one? <laughs> but uh, I, I just mean like because Bryce Dallas Howard is like, well, she's not tall, but she's, right, she's a lot taller than Josh Hutcherson. Yeah, and I just cool. remember and Josh Hutcherson's name being in there so somewhere, and it was. I don't know. I don't know why that has stuck in my mind ten years later. And but, he was popular so. at the time because of Hunger Games, I think. Hunger so he was Games, one of yeah. the like it actors at the time yeah he seems to have i don't you don't see him Josh Hutchison. no he's kind of uh he's doing his own he was in uh like he was five in five Night nights at freddy's. at freddy's yeah oh yeah good point yeah we uh gen z loved that in. apparently turn that off five minutes in <laughs> yeah it's not, it's i still not for us, i still haven't seen it not for did us. the same with the either. the mean girls musical we will oh mean girls you know who doesn't love mean girls tried the new didn't realize it was a musical to be fair but oh, it's tried i've watched five it minutes. It's based on, it's not it. based on the movie. It's based on the Broadway musical. So it's a different thing, but yeah, it's just, it's just, just whatever it is. It's, just, it's, it's different. Just, yeah, it's different. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't even, and this is my girlfriend as well. Big Mean Girls fan. Like, Welcome yeah. to Mean Girls Outpost, everybody. <laughs> now, you guys can start that one. I, I no, we, Jack, you and I still do Honey, the Shrunk the Kids. Honey, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids podcast eventually when Joe Johnson gets on that damn movie. Outpost. I'm telling yeah, you, it's going to happen. Yeah. Joker 2 is a musical. That's true, Joker 2. Jazz hands. So <laughs> Ryan wants a Jurassic musical. Got it, got it, got it. This yeah. podcast is is incredible already. <laughs> this is going off the rails. And you know what? I would I would want that. I want to see a Jurassic Park 
musical adaptation. But it has to be a horror musical. I've even, have you ever, has that ever been a horror musical? Yeah, there's sure yes. there has. Spider Man Broadway. Yeah. Okay, cut, just cut that. Color, showing, my, showing my absolute <laughs> ignorance no 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 You're now crazy. we're getting like a, a musical full, podcast here full, yeah a full a, it's a diverse podcast. i mean diverse podcast. little yeah 15 hits yeah it's gonna have a bunch of songs yeah they better do lady gaga they better do lady gaga yeah lady gaga better be singing every single one of those covers or what's the <laughs> point of getting lady Gaga? yeah i forgot she was in it as well that's <laughs> the entire draw of the movie no i mean i just like the first one yeah i liked the first one a lot yeah <laughs> um Whoa. You like the movie, and that's your draw. Jack likes life. getting depressed in movies. I don't like getting depressed when I watch movies. I already watched Jurassic World the trilogy once. I don't need to see like Joker to get depressed. <laughs> you know what's funny? I actually, um, I guess it's not funny. It's actually, kind of, I haven't watched. Oh, no. Probably never. No, you will, because you live just down the road from me, and I'm gonna come over there. I'm actually coming there in May. You don't know this yet, but I am coming in May. <laughs> He's and gonna we show are up. gonna link up. Technically, I do know this now. No, no um, I am coming for. Uh, I'm actually, actually, I'm coming for work. So, Jack, you and I will be linking up. You come in downtown. What's the work in May? Uh, there's a, I Secret. can't say I can't. I'm not gonna say it here, Special. but uh, we'll be there for a couple of weeks, and then Tell we get a couple of days off in in Vancouver. So I get to enjoy. You bringing a boy. You bring a boy. Is it a secret? Is it a secret because you're working on Jurassic World Four? Is that why it's a secret? <gasps> We are filming, filming in Vancouver. In I've been cast as the military attaché to Scarlett Johansson. I want to put this out there now, <laughs> I guess. Jurassic World exclusive, because you guys have been listening for years. We respect it, and <clears throat> we love you. Speaking of casting, though, since I've been cast in the other movies, should we talk about my co-leads? Uh, Hammond's daughter or granddaughter? You want to take this? <laughs> I don't know this rumor. All right, all right, all right. So yes, I Jack, had... Jack, tell us, tell us about for that. Full, for full context, on for, for those listening, if going forward, if you are, like, totally avoiding but we are at that point now if you are totally avoiding spoilers for this film this is a potential spoiler i don't believe this but i've heard this from another source now um that the lead or not necessarily the lead but one of the characters is hammond's daughter and i was thinking okay so like a new person and then i was like actually that yeah right would that be tim and lex's tim and lex's mum? and then i was like actually okay now now i was kind of in for it but i don't know i i I don't yeah. necessarily believe it, but apparently um, it came from uh, something to do with casting. So there might be, you know, timeline sort of aligns. I guess at this point they, w they will be putting the casting notices out, or at least if not, we know that the Scarlett Yo Johansson thing. Well, do we believe it. Jeff Snyder? Because he's the only one. Yes, that we believe 100%. Really that, right? we, you guys should believe Jeff Snyder. He's legitimate. She would, I mean, it's 30 years. Yeah. She would have been like 30, years. probably by then, right? 30, 35. Yeah. I mean, Depending on when the film is set, it. I guess. It's a legal drama. Is that basically? Yeah, what you're yeah, right. Though? This is a legal so drama. So if it's movie. if it's a couple, it's a legal drama. It's set entirely in court. It's basically a corresponding story. That <laughs> oh, it takes dude, the main movie. It takes so while she's after going Dominion. through this divorce, she's finding out that her kids are nearly uh, missing on this island, and yeah, it's all it's a terrifying. But it's well, all there was that court. never see anything. In, on there the was night. that really good court scene in Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom. So I mean. I think this Let's is a little see. subtle Have hint. The, the mm -hmm. Universal wants to turn this into a court drama because look what how what Dominion ended. Malcolm. Dominion wow. ended with sitting uh, behind the court desk. Oh, you no, know, I'm telling you because <laughs> Dominion ended with uh, Sattler and Grant outside a courtroom. Next movie is going to start with <laughs> granddaughter <laughs> on trial, being whatever, talking whatever, blah blah blah. Tim and Lex are going to be there, and then Grant and Ellie are going to kick that oh, door wait. down and no, be like, the age, "It's Tim over, boys and girls. We got the files. It's done. Pack it up." A file. Where's Corey? Get Corey. He's a lawyer. Yeah, we're yeah. Corey. Um, hey. Oh yeah. It's here's the thing. It's so victims in yeah. in real life, victims of trauma often go on to be activists and involved in those worlds. Mm -hmm. So like it would make one thousand percent sense for Tim and Lex to be doing something with activism or with dinosaurs or with science or something. Like that would make a lot of sense. So I've always yeah. had it in my head that Lex has like a dinosaur sanctuary now somewhere. Cool. Cause they're big. That'd cows. be awesome. Um, yeah. Um, Assis and Sam and Ryan, y'all, uh, weren't on the last pod, but I happen to know that at least two of you are big fans of ScarJo. Um, Poppy. give me, give me your oh, ScarJo yeah. Jurassic reactions. All of you. <laughs> Sam, I'll let you go first. <laughs> uh, I'm in, I mean, just on because I love Scarlett Johansson and everything that we've been hearing, it's going to be a little more action. So 
we know she does well in action not saying that i want her like full-on black widow mode but she is capable of doing action and Mm -hmm. dialogue she can act she can do everything so it's not just gonna be mindless you know shooting things like we heard it might be john wick initially like it's not gonna be that so that is the worst of the of the rumors (laughs) i get i get the sort of like link but like yeah i don't that's not that's if like david David leach crossed jurassic park i'm like there's no cross that doesn't work that's he's the wrong guy and the same with the john wick cross jurassic same Mm -hmm. with dwayne johnson cross jurassic i'm like who's thinking these work (laughs) well jack (laughs) if if scarjo Hold on. If Scar, I was just gonna say, if ScarJo Go came in and was like a Sarah Harding esque character, Please, like give it to me. Yes. Yeah. I want the Thing poster. Is she- I will cosplay her. I'm. I'll get as soon as I get the images of making a cosplay. Yeah, you're like, ready. What were you gonna say? We go. <laughs> I was gonna say David Leach might be onto something though, because you know that rumor that Aaron Taylor Johnson got offered James Bond, and then yeah. he got, like David Leach was Jurassic. Maybe David Leach has got something going here. I'm just saying. What's he got to do with Aaron Taylor Johnson? <laughs> he might be Bond. Yeah. As Bond. Yeah, as they would. As they would say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Who was quick to debunk the the Bond news, though? Like, the studio? His agents and stuff, yeah. I guess everyone, really, trying to say, like, no, 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 no. But, you know, I don't know. But Depends right, who the agencies right. are and, like, yeah. whether they'd comment. Because I'd say if it was, like, the studio commenting, Universal, they never <laughs> tidy up rooms no, no. like that. Yeah. Right? yeah. But if it was... Well, yeah, and with yeah. the Scarlet, with the Scarlet thing, um, I'm pretty sure people were saying that like <clears throat> we've we've reached out to them and her reps, or or and I think Universal, and they were they said that like no one, none no of comments. them commented on the Scarlet news, so. which is like a good sign. I mean, either way, it's good buzz. I think even if it's yeah. not yeah. true, and they're all laughing at us, like having the idea of just somebody as big as her, like in the Jurassic Park sequel, Gareth Edwards, is just good for the momentum mm-hmm. drive, and they probably mm-hmm. don't want to squash that if it is fake, but. You know, she's probably at a point in her career as well where she, after she, I'm assuming she's just been playing Black Widow for the past like few years or so. She's actually not. She's, she's done other stuff. Really, like her own stuff, yeah. Generally been doing that as well, right? I know mm-hmm. she's working on a couple. She of, did a she did a couple of Wes Anderson movies. Yeah. Asteroid City. She was in Asteroid City, right? Yeah, that's true. But she might be looking for something where she's the lead. She can dominate, but isn't superhero-y. Maybe this is attracting. Exactly. Yeah. Because it's not superhero-y. But then David Leach was offered the role, so I'm thinking maybe it is superhero-y, John Wick. But the thing, maybe. Ryan, how do you feel about this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sarah Harding, right? Sarah Harding. <clears throat> yeah. She's good at running. <laughs> yeah, she's fit. She works out. That's my resume. No. Oh, yeah. She's done that. She had Black Widow. <laughs> yeah. But some tension. Some tension in there. You also need to kill a main character at this point because the problem with Jurassic World franchise was there was no tension because you knew that none of the characters yes. were gonna were gonna get eaten or or hurt or any real way. Like think about it this way: um, the Wanda Weiss's character, I don't even know her name anymore, and uh, Owen, Kayla, they, they crash. Kayla. A, Kayla, thank you. They crash a plane. They crash a plane, and they're, <laughs> they're okay. Scene is so funny. And then Owen falls into a frozen lake, and they're okay. Yeah, like, but they get out from that plane crash and they're like, they've just come out of the modeling like, Have a broken bone. Up. Have someone be <laughs> oh. hurt. Have some blood. Just like, no. cool, right? Owen like rolled away from lava. Do you guys remember the lava roll? True. Like, that was yeah. fine. I, I, didn't, I actually like that. You know what? No. That <laughs> like, <laughs> like that I like that scene a lot. Um, we can say, <laughs> yeah. True. Guys, remember who did that scene? J.A. Bayona did that. But it has no identity itself. That's always the problem I found with the world movies is that it seems like Colin was trying to do so many different things. Like, because he, he got in that quote of Spielberg, like Jurassic Park is a multi-genre film, which of course it is. Like it, the screenplay perfectly blends. That's, mm-hmm. that's why it's so successful. You can do multiple genres, but you can get them right and you can get it wrong. I think Colin like took that on board. He was just trying to do way too much. Uh, was it was the quote jack of all trades master of none mm-hmm. the, the world movies kind of feel like that in a way like owen like what is owen like what's his i don't care about that character i don't even know cool, anything right? about him other than he was in the military right yeah i like that i like that he I, built I can connect cabin. With that, so yeah you connect with that because you are in the military but like the majority <laughs> kind of kind of he's are. the navy special forces it i can't doesn't... connect with that but i guess i can connect with <laughs> yeah. in the army i guess have any of us ever built a cabin like there isn't much to you know link <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like it's it just such Jack a generic to stereotype to of a character. Jack wants characters. Movie. I connect. Who go on the subway. Who, who use, I connect with Claire. 
Claire has yeah, Claire's like the every my corporate person. girly. No, I connect with Claire because <laughs> she like is uh I don't know, a mess. How about that? No, well Claire's like Claire's actually really relatable if you think about it. She's put she's like in a shitty manager position and she has to do these things for the betterment of the park and not necessarily That's for what the betterment I mean. of the people. Yeah. Like she's a really relatable a relatable character in the Jurassic World franchise, I think. Even in and the- arguably she got yeah, Have even like, yeah. Uh, Truth. dude, I can I just say one, say one thing. I remember we were watching uh, Fallen Kingdom together, and they were at the end of the the, uh, the movie. Claire was about to press that button. I was like, dude, she presses that button, I'm done. And she didn't. I was like, okay, okay. Dude, I was done. At okay. Albert Hammond. And then the button got pressed anyways. John okay. Albert Hammond. That's when I I tapped out. Like, now nah, that's it for me. They're butchering my my beloved. You know? <laughs> he is John Albert Hammond now officially. And that's what I think. I feel like the world era is a child that's reminiscing about the original. It was actually all a dream. And yeah, they wake was... up on an island. Wake up. And it's... <laughs> it's Hammond's daughter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it was 2004. Just... <laughs> yeah, we're, we're a couple, couple, couple years what, away still. What role... What, what story role is Hammond's daughter going to play? What motivations could she possibly have? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. What would, I'm, what would I'm asking that as a serious question. Okay. It's just bait. So, no, here's the thing, guys. For the no, no, if we, if we do go this route and we, I don't know how mature Universal wants to get with this, but like they could say, they can go really dark with it and say like Lex and Tim, they couldn't get, overcome their trauma from the first couple movies and they're no longer yeah. with us, for, for example, right? Jesus. Then maybe their mom is like, yo, screw these dinosaurs. I want to eliminate them. Scarlett Jansen, you're a cool soldier. Let's go shoot some dinosaurs over there. I don't know. Maybe that's you're a cool soldier. You can, you're a cool you can... soldier. You're like one of the boys, Scarlett Johansson. Go no, join the boys. What's your dad with? Three hundred fifty. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah, you're on. You're on. Let's go. We're lifting. We're going. But you know what I mean, though. Like, so you can you can concoct a story for for Hammond's daughter's character. You can like it's easy because he is uh, linked to this tra- uh, tragedy. Maybe Hammond's family got sued. Maybe they're broke because of this and. They have to re I don't know, maybe they have to go to court and get some documents saying Hammond's clean or something. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like you can make something to make Hammond. She wants revenge on the this. dinosaur. This is the story. The, the, the John children Wick. died. John Wick. The children John couldn't Wick. live with it. <laughs> Instead they, of a dog. They're now no longer the, with it's, us. It's Just Hammond's daughter left. Hammond's passed away. She wants revenge on the dinosaur. Obviously he's losing her mind. So she heads to the island. 64 with- year old woman. Yeah, sixty-four-year-old woman. She's locked and loaded. She's ready for revenge. Well, hang on now. If it's like she Helen Mirren, I'm, I'm going to give Helen Mirren the back hybrids, of the doubt. Maisie dominate Helen the island. Mirren. These horrific raptor Maisie human hybrid things are there, and it's a bloodbath. I think it would be. Uh, I think I'd watch. Here's the thing. I I think um I think if this Ham and Daughter thing is legit, it's not going to be the one that's related to Tim and Lex. Like as in, it's not going to be their mother. It'll be like the aunt or something. There was another other daughter. Dun, dun. Okay, if you guys remember way, way back? <laughs> I don't. But here's the thing: don't the care about the family this... tree. There was actually, there was actually. I know, I know, I know. Third business partner, <laughs> Jack. <laughs> Lifting weights. Ooh, I'm taken. No, exactly. That's true. So I agree. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Brad's cousin. That's the rumor. They shouldn't show up. Well, yeah. and that was in the first report that the, 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 the rumor, like along with the announcement of the new movie is they were pretty firm on that. Like, no, there's going to be no attachments. The yeah. old, old yeah, yes. exactly. Please. John Hammond comes in at the end, with a, like half later. He shoots everyone. <laughs> no, no, no. Get off my island. Yeah. John Hammond comes back at the end and is like, you thought it was just Maisie, but it's me too. They cloned me. I'm a hybrid. I've <laughs> always been a hybrid. I think Ryan's right. At the end of the day, Jack's right too. At the pre- all the press releases, all the rumors, and all like, the trades are saying there's no relation to like the original characters. There's no Owen, none of that, no Red. So literally, no the first Owen, thing, no just the first thing they told us was like there's no connection. So it, I, the fact that Hammond's daughter is coming into this, either the story changed, which I highly doubt, because they seemed very fixated on keeping uh, kept script intact. Like so much so that they wouldn't even let the directors like that's like part of the negotiations apparently. So I don't think that Hammond's daughter would be a character in that scenario. I, I 
I can see them doing it. I just feel like pre -cool. uh, I think pre -cool. there's so many arguments pre -cool. for pre -cool. like not having that connective tissue. And I think right why it's might be so disgusting to Ryan, and it kind of is to me, is because like we had Benjamin Lockwood, and then we also had Charlotte Lockwood, and we had, and Maisie also was on sauna, you know, like mm -hmm. running around as a hybrid, and it's just like. It's just like there was such an injection in the World Series of like, oh, guess what? Also, he was like Hammond's best friend, you know, like, oh, he was his partner from the very beginning. They actually, this is where they bred diners, not on the islands. It was here in the basement. It's like, okay, cool. But like kind of just didn't go anywhere because in the same movie, they just like killed Lockwood. <laughs> and then with Charlotte, you're just like, she's, she's also dead. Too. She doesn't exist. She's dead now. But here's some videos of her. And then Maisie's a like clone kid, sort of. She's not, but she is. And you're just like, it's just muddy and messy. There's no reason for any of that to be connected to John Hammond. It makes the John Hammond legacy feel a bit tainted in my view. Because I'm like, do when I think back, I'm like, was Hammond like thinking of him like working with Lockwood? I'm like, do I do? Is that what I want? I actually kind of prefer. Well, no, well, not, not I mean, Fallen Kingdom. Uh, Fallen Kingdom makes it clear that Hammond was like. That's why they parted like hammond didn't agree with True. what lockwood yes. was doing but yeah i mean yeah <laughs> it just it just more more like i feel like maybe those things in the world era didn't work or they didn't pay off as well as maybe the studio maybe colin thought they would i don't want them to taint it further by continuing to be like oh like ryan said it's like hammond's second cousin it's just like it doesn't need to be maybe to maybe this isn't star wars <laughs> yeah and it's like no, they haven't got it everyone right. Everyone has really to be related far, but... to like the prequels. Not everyone has to be related to freaking something. Like Yoda has not have to True. be in every show. You know what I mean? Like this Yoda. isn't like the characters aren't what makes Jurassic Jurassic. It's the situation mm -hmm. in which the current characters are placed in that makes Jurassic the Find movie. Themselves. It's not yeah. the fact that Grant and Al, uh, Ellie and, and Ian Malcolm were like in the rest of the movies that made it feel like Jurassic. It made it feel more homely. Yes, but. At the end of the day, what what Jurassic is is a bunch of people, like Ryan says, fighting for survival. Bunch of boys place against dinosaurs. <laughs> yes, yes, agreed, agreed. It's my favorite Jurassic Park sequel. And you like him right away. In that is dinosaurs on the mainland. That's the concept. It's like oh, it's what, because it's not like oh, the people tracking them and following them. It's the people that would be like, what the fuck? It's yeah, like the it lady in the car in Lost World who screams yeah. and reverses backwards. Like, what's her story? We need her origin story. You know, we need <laughs> her uh, biopic. You know, because I think that would be no. But for real, like it is that. It's it's the Battle of Big Rock thing, and it's a shame that we never got more of those stories i hope like i know dino tracker tried to do that and did it but obviously that was short viral clips expanded short films is the way i hope and future I sure was meant to do some as well there were meant to be more that was definitely the, yeah. the plan i hope I future things there. tap into that vibe of we don't know these people and it's just chaotic like no i mean and that takes away i mean that takes away the prequel conversation perhaps but it's like no ties to anything previous, just new people in these situations. Well, I think you could do a prequel without having any connective characters. That's true. No, like, I agree. Yeah. Like, the, the, so say, for example, she is Hammond's daughter. They don't need to tell us that. That mm -hmm. could be something that maybe we figure out by ourselves. Yeah. It's not something they focus on. And it's not something that, because it, or else it's going to be this thing where they reveal her in the same way we first saw Hammond or something. And she's got like a cane. And just like, what? <laughs> she like, has a cane. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They try and do it. You know, she has his cane. You know, and it's just like, I don't want that. That we don't want that fan service, and I don't feel like Gareth will give us that. If it's in the script, it won't be by the time Gareth filming that movie. I feel like, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Ronnie together, the two of them. Capitalist to naturalist in four years. Yeah, yeah. It's the unknown. It's the unknown. Yeah, and and I think, yeah. <clears throat> To, just to expand on your point a little bit as well, like one of the other things was always to me, the idea like before the world, like there were rumors in the world and that's what the same way that there's rumors about what happened at Roswell to this day, you know, like the alien thing. You don't fully know, but it was covered up or whatever it was, you know, that's just real life. That's how things work. Same thing would have happened with the islands. Like, yeah, people would know about it. A lot of people would think they knew the truth. There's obviously the Dino Tracker. I think it might've been before Dino Tracker, but it was the video that, um, I forget his name made, but of the San Diego T-Rex, like a little clip of the T-Rex. Manuel, like yeah. A Manuel, yeah. And it was a brand new angle that no one had ever seen. Um, I, <laughs> oh, yeah, the people, well, I just, Manuel's work just blows me away. Uh, 
<clears throat> but yeah, as Ryan said, like the world didn't fully know. There were talks and there were rumors. The idea of like a sequel, and I know they can't do this because the islands it can't just go to the, oh, another, we go to the island again and then we have to get rescued. Like that's, it, you can't just do the same thing over and over. But the idea of somebody that's heard these rumors, like in the Lost World novel, right? When they go into the, I think it's Levine. They go into his office. It's been years since I read it. They go into his office and they find like the map. And it's got all the coordinates and it's like he's trying he's trying to find the fucking island and the idea of adventurers and like like the, in the mummy where it's like they're all trying to find the it's like people trying to find the jurassic island or find something that mm -hmm. was there or another in-gen location or something i don't know there's something about that that is so jurassic to me and i get it's overplayed you can't just like keep going to the island but i don't feel like the world movies captured that feeling at all you it, know i'm like I gotta finish. I'm like halfway through. <laughs> Wait, so have you got to the scene? It's like a couple, a chapter or something where it's like they're in his office or something. They're in his home office, in his home, and it's like. Oh, he's Levine, left. Levine's already dead in mine. <laughs> By where you're right. Yeah, but yeah. Whoa, am I right? Whoa, whoa, they whoa, go whoa, into his whoa, office. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Yeah, I was gonna say, wait, wait, wait. Pointless. Wait a second. Normal. This is the same, same Levine from The Lost World? Yeah. Why? Right, what have you heard? You had a rumor. He's dead now. So that's good or no i don't like him anyways he's but, been oh, he's been dragged he's been dragged off or something i mean maybe yeah <laughs> what what are you saying is this <laughs> doesn't matter do you guys think that ever see any more characters from the novels come back because we still have a lot of untapped i don't not aside from the doc because doc thorne was essentially eddie carr you guys think we'll ever see like a levine or will the next kid ever be arby like we still there's still a lot of untapped like Arby. even Arby Benton, that'd be cool. Yeah. Arby, Arby and Kelly, it's still Kelly in the novel, isn't it? Yeah, Kelly it's and Kelly. Arby. I, I, while I love like in the novel, I do like how it was Kelly in the film. Really? Like Kelly's such a great character, yeah. Um, but then I still, I wish we got more of her alone in the high hide. Cause there were, mm. was it written Arby, or was it? Arby in the Lost the World film? is like super, super smart and like knows yeah, more he's than like the a adults good do. Character. Yeah, he's like a good character. <laughs> yeah, Justice Smith. Gray? Gray? Oh yeah. yeah, sorry. Yeah, no. Gray has like. Did, does Gray have autism in the movie? Is that like a confirmed aspect that Colin went with? How big is the island? How many pounds? Yeah, he knows it's strange. <laughs> strange. You need facts. more teeth and stuff like that. But that was that was written, wasn't it, in like the character sheet or something? I think so. that's why I keep remembering him having to be autism. something played in a bit more in the film, and then we know that there's that picture when they first start filming, and you can see all the rewrites in the screenplay. <laughs> you remember that? And I think it's I think it's great. It's when Ty Simpkins arrived in Hawaii and he sat down with Colin and they're going like most of the script yeah. is like the rewrites. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh god. They changed a lot. Maybe that's something that just got lost in sort of like rewrites and stuff. I imagine that back to the novel stuff, like I imagine that there's a lot of stuff in the novels that we haven't seen, right? Like the one thing I keep going back to with RB is him in the Velo and like him in a cage inside the Velociraptor nest. We haven't really seen that. That's a cool thing, because each Jurassic movie kind of has our main characters kind of stuck in a vehicle, whether it be a gyrosphere or some sort of Jeep or the the, R, the RVs. Um, him being stuck in a cage and having like lost robbers outside of him, I think it's a cool idea. I think it's something we have to see still. So It's a cool idea, but the setup counts because it's like, why would he be in the cage? In the yeah. Place, you know? Well, but how I do you agree. end up in a cage I, in the yeah. novels? Are we, talk, are we talking shit about the, the Lost World novel? Is that, is that <laughs> no, how we're going? No, I can't remember. I can't. How dare you? I can't remember that. Um, <laughs> hey, I can't um, remember the novel here. too well. Aziz, it's been a long time. Aziz, to correct myself from a minute ago, where I am at in the novel, he is presumed dead, but he does not end up that way. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. Oh, the next snap? Sarah Harding on a motorcycle. Carnotaur scene. T-Rex shitting on the car. The trailer. T-Rex. <laughs> 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 or like, you know, like, what did he do? Like, he scored on the court. Like, he like he did some sort of marking. Like, He's, on it. yeah. You know, I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it. That's what it is. I don't want to say it. Just, yeah, they know, talk about what it is it, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. it's, it's the it's the it's the liquid. <laughs> I know. No, no. That's what that's what Ryan was like. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> that is what it is. That's it. It, it happens. It happens. It happens. <laughs> It just has that Crichton, what were you doing, buddy? <clears throat> it's biologically accurate, you know. That's Crichton. That's Crichton. I want T Rex sperm. So far, it's a really bizarre <laughs> concept. We got. <laughs> How'd you get it? You don't want to know. You don't want to know. Me. Yeah, that's a bad story for another day. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, 
but Ryan, tell us which one you were talking about for real. Yes. <laughs> Is that what you were actually talking about? <clears throat> yeah, I thought you were talking about like a death scene or something. <laughs> Ryan officially has no faith left in Jurassic. But I'll talk about a cool death scene. Hoping for a, for a, a jizz sequence in next Jurassic. I think. I think I know the Lost World novel like front to back. They did. That's gone. Yeah, but it's much cooler in... Actually, I think it might be in that draft. Um, yeah, the Atrocity Raptors which, as well. The JP3 motorcycle raptor chase in that script. The one thing we haven't seen, though, I think will be a very, very cool scene is the, the Stanford professor that goes with uh, Dodson's team. And they go into the t-rex nest and they're like trying to take the eggs and then everything goes wrong and like they're all standing still and then the t-rex comes up to them yes. and stomps the professor and they're like oh shit that's a yeah. scene that, we gotta see that is brutal yeah and dodgson's sort of last moments yeah you see that's kicked, another thing sarah harding is... kicks his ass out from under the car t-rex gets his ass that's that's what yeah I'm talking about. and like even the whole sarah harding goes with them and then like as they approach the island they yeah, get the fuck off the boat. i love the kind of like it it puts her in the trespasser phase where she kind of wakes up on the beach and like i don't know i just there's there's a lot that hasn't been done with the island that could still be biased. it's a bit of a yeah maybe we're getting the true lost world novel adaptation the true hey. like Did david kept second attempt yeah, maybe Cap's like, look, I always wanted to do it. We did a very different movie. But the thing is, they can't do Dodgson because he's been used and abused in the world era. So it's like... Maybe it's a prequel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but still, you can't kill Dodgson like you did in the Oh, yeah, true, movie, you know? true. He gets, away. he gets away. No, of course. I think it should... At this point, they have to avoid... I want them to avoid bias in it. Well, I guess unless it ties, but I, I want, want them to anything. avoid anything from the world era so that it feels like it's an isolated story. Well, I know what you mean. You know? Yeah. Not because I hate that era, just like... Just give it a rest, Russ. Stop mentioning like Mizrani. Like, don't mention, <laughs> don't mention the world era. <laughs> Just uh, you know, I, I think it'd be good for a change. Like, we all keep saying we want a standalone story. It's like give us a standalone story that doesn't, as Ryan said, you know, that isn't like oh, it's Hammond's second cousin and is this and that and that. It just is a standalone story. I think they could deliver that. I mean, especially um, with Garrett Edwards being the director, we know he delivered. Mm -hmm. You know he. He was half he's four for four, one. as far as I'm concerned. He's four hundred percent, hundred percent. Whether you think he uh, did Rogue One or not, the rest of his movies still still stand. Monsters, great. Godzilla, the best of the MonsterVerse, as far as I'm concerned. Yes. The rest of them are trash. It's a great movie. Yeah, it has flaws for sure, but they're screenplay flaws. And who wrote Godzilla? Did he write Max Borenstein? Well, there you go. A C. I know everything. We Ooh. did. We did a little bit, yeah, because I can't shut up about it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I no, but I think it was Jack who mentioned on the last pod that like they would have had a guy by now. Like they must have had a person by now. If they haven't, they're they're like a little bit behind the bar. No, no. There's there's tons of other good. Like there's tons of other other good like cinematographers. We we don't know who's out there as long as it's not like Jason Schwartzman again. Like just for the just for like, <laughs> yeah, yes. not talking shit. Not Keep talking Schwartzman shit. away from Jurassic. That man. guy's like Oscar nominated. Well, I'm not yeah. talking shit. I'm talking as in a, we need a fresh take. Someone similar yeah. in the vein yeah. of Oscar Flora. I don't think he quite nailed it, but I think Gareth Edwards knows what he's doing. Hell, he can do it himself. I don't care. He he can be a cinematographer Larry Fong. and director. Give me just like Gareth. Give Drew. me some Larry Fong, please. Get my Larry Jurassic Fong, like, he back knows. to like Didn't boots Larry on Fong the ground. Do battle. You know, big rock? He did Battle of Big Rock, yeah. Camera. Let's do it. He he shot that perfectly fine. No problem with that. Uh, Battle of Big Rock, I mean, it's nothing, it is better than... It's what, not special, you know, but Gareth will bring the special out. Nothing special, whereas it Monsters is special. Is it special. Is special. He shot that himself. That's literally Gareth Edwards going around with a fucking handicap. You know what I want? Those old, uh, like, Sony... Um, I forgot what I want, I want Gareth Edwards. You know Edwards. those old Sony cameras that were, like, the things yeah. that... You remember 28 Days Later in the beginning and it looks like shit and they filmed it on that? <laughs> sony camera that's like don't take screenshot um of it was like a, a white it's like a white camera with with red on it it's like, oh, fuck it you know it doesn't matter um uh anyway like the idea of gareth getting hands on the ground like boots i'm losing my point in rogue one he was he was very hands-on he filmed a lot of it himself and he was on the ground you're gonna get some low angles you're gonna get some sick me. low angles i yeah, wanted that kind of in feel, Rogue you know, One, that's true. Gareth Rogue does Rogue. love his low angles. Even yeah. the AT, <laughs> but, but AT walkers. Because, like, how do we perceive the world? <laughs> and I yeah, love, I love it. Don't that, get me wrong. Like, that last battle in Jurassic World is is kind of confusing because it's like the movie's been quite grounded up to that point, and then all of a sudden the big end battle and the camera doing this massive sky drone three hundred and sixty, and you're like, 
and whose POV is this? Like, who, who's <laughs> this battle, you know? And it's just like, why wasn't it? It'd be scary if it was shot from like Gray's perspective the whole time, like because that would have made them these giant scary behemoths. Um, so Gareth, I feel Edward, like Gareth will bring that back to he will because he's so good at that. In Rogue One, he made the AT-AT walkers seem like these <clears throat> living Massive. scary behemoths, like these animals that they'll just kill you because. When they first show them come out of like the, the dust and the trees and it was like, what's this terrifying thing? And what does it do after that? It just wrecks everyone on the ground. It shows the the terror and the danger of what it, even the creator, like yeah. those weird little beams and stuff, like, oh, it's just a little light beam. What does it do at the start of the movie? It blows everyone away. And then even later well, on, and, little, uh, a big things. a big part I of that is guy. The best. Greg Greg Fraser big is a big help in that scale sense of, course, of thing. Of course. But, but um, so, Monsters, he, Gareth's first film, he got that himself. Did it all himself. So. Yep, running around with an old Sony, I think it was. That's what I was trying to say before, that old Sony. It's a famous camera <laughs> thing, now, I can't think of the name. This, yeah, yeah, that, thing, right yeah, that, podcast that, that big chunky thing that he was holding. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, here we go. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. <clears throat> with the boys. <laughs> <laughs> use the voice yeah i get what you're saying yeah though. It, need, it needs to be treated with this gritty realism and this sort of gr um this uh, yeah it's, literally it's hard, it's to card, because like, i don't want it yeah. to be this massive cg schlock fest you know and this big i i want it to feel real again the same <clears> way <throat> that godzilla introduces you to locations like when you go into the forbidden it feels very much like I mean that it feels real, you know. It feels like a, a, a very much abandoned. It doesn't feel like a CGI fest, even though obviously a lot of it. Was, I I, I just, want. Go ahead, Jack. <laughs> no, I just want Gareth. What I hope Gareth brings is that realism. That um, I just feel like it's so it's, the the world era just feels superficial. Everything on screen feels quite superficial and and very corporate and it just doesn't feel like as organic as the original ones did and i know a lot of that isn't just the jurassic era that is kind of cinema day but they can capture True. that i think gareth is one of the filmmakers working that has the ability i want gareth's I just, it's tough i want gareth's sense of scale and like because when i think about watching jurassic park in the lost world as a kid the islands just felt so big like Mm -hmm. They felt like such big places, and they still like do. if you if you were stuck on it, that would be the most terrifying thing. You wouldn't know, you know your way around be... at all. Like I yeah, was like, I... how do how are these people even know where the fuck they are? <laughs> like because they just felt so big, and everything had I don't know. It it felt like the scale was correct to be terrifying, and uh, the trees imposing. felt big. If that makes sense, yeah. But I don't know. Does that make sense? Like things felt yeah, yeah. appropriate scale wise. But when you're mm -hmm. having things, even like the camera shots in Jurassic Park that are like further away and like above eye level, it's still shot in a way that's very realistic as if you were like, oh, you're seeing this from a distance. You know what I mean? Like, like Jack mentioned the Jurassic World shot. How are we seeing this 360 dolly shot above the T-Rexes? It kind of takes you out of it. It takes you out of the, the, the moment of being like, we're no longer watching a movie about humans surviving against dinosaurs we're, we're now watching a movie about dinosaurs with humans running around in between them if that makes sense it's a subtle difference but it makes the dinosaurs the stars when they really shouldn't be if that makes <clears> sense because they should it just went the classic hollywood blockbuster way for that ending of it jurassic did. world when it's it was a really easy solve of just having like well there was some survivors still up on the fucking buildings up there yeah you know, there were people like, in the hotel they're like probably. what's going on they're trying to sleep out wait for rescue mm -hmm. and then they're like the fuck's going on down there got woken up yeah. there's a massive battle going on and but they they're the ones that the povs like kind of they peer over and they're like what the giant thing happening and then we go back to gray street level you know there were ways to show us this ridiculous so that's what i was trying to get battle. to the best part about gareth edwards the most comparable movie to jurassic is godzilla if you look at the godzilla final battle you're getting the shots from literally the rooftops where the soldiers are the buildings where there's a few survivors hunkering down, you've seen the, the battle way off in the distance, and it looks fucking massive because Gareth Edwards understands these giant hulking creatures move slowly towards each other in the distance and stuff like that. He understands that when he pushes them into a building, the building will crumble a certain way. Like he, he knows how to film that to make it seem like, oh, all these things are heavy. Like that's the problem with Jurassic World. Dinosaurs feel very floaty. There's no sense of weight to the dinosaurs. In Godzilla, everything is heavy. 
you're seeing every shot of the of the monsters from like literally points of view where humans are. You're not seeing it from like this 360 shots. Every single shot mm-hmm. from like a building, through a window, through a bus, through a car. It's like it's through it puts you. He frames a lot. He does. There are yes. shots yeah, like it- from the in Godzilla, there are shots like from the ground, from like someone who's on the ground's perspective, and it's just yeah. like insane. It the looks amazing. Guy. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, and Godzilla's reveal, <laughs> like the reveal itself, the first at the at the airport in Godzilla, the way he yeah, builds yeah. up yeah. to the shot. We were we're yeah. not gonna get like I feel like the action in the Jurassic World franchise was very much like just throw everything we can at the screen all at once. Just so we can. There's no sense of restraint. Colin needed to workshop some actual like action mm-hmm. sequences. He needed and to plan it out. But I Gareth mean, not plan has it a out. lot of restraint. We're not going to get those. <laughs> we're not going to get 15 stuff. raptors at once. We're going to get like the two of them. And we're not going to get like this wild action scene where like you're going through a cityscape. If you do get that, it's going to be like over the shoulder. You're going to be seeing like the face and like the dinosaur just barely over the shoulder. And stuff like that. You're going to be seeing shots like... Yeah, almost like being hunted by a lion or yeah. something. Or a tiger that's chasing you. And you're like, wait, where the fuck did it go? Exactly. Like, we've all seen mm-hmm. those videos of, like, guy encounters bear. And then you're like, wait, where did it go? Yeah, this <laughs> like, oh, God, where animal did it go? Is gone. Yeah. You know, like... Uh, you know, I've seen stuff like that here. You know, been out and it's like there's a bear, and then you turn away for one second, you're like, where did the bear go? We Jack go lives in a right very now. dangerous place <laughs> in Canada. Yeah, I don't, I don't mess with bears. I've seen a lot of bears. Bears like the one animal. If I see, I'll be like that and moose. I'm like, dude, no. uh, the... black bears are fine. I, there's yeah, black bears are fine. So so I live in like a complex, and there's, there's these. They didn't have doors on like the outside garbage area, and it was never really a problem. But there's been a lot of um, migration of bears recently. You have brown uh, bears where you are too, bro. Same with it was Ryan. like this was like last year, I think. I was, it happened three times. I was taking the trash out. It was like eight p.m. I was in my own world. You gotta like, be careful. Going wrong. I started walking towards the trash. I got right up to the door, and it's black. It you can't. There's no lights in there, so you can't see anything. I was stood at the doorway, and I suddenly clocked that all these people were shouting. <laughs> And these people in like the buildings up there were like, "Don't go in them! Don't go in there! Don't go! In there. There's a bear in there!" Oh my like, gosh! Oh. I was like, "Oh okay, like we're, we're, like <laughs> the crowd." And Barely then, like, avoid bear death. Just like, <laughs> out. But Dude. it happened like three times Dude. where I was like, "I come out in my own world." Imagine that with a fucking bear was, uh... instead of a bear. That's the story. Yeah, You're exactly. Going, Jack's mm-hmm. going out for fucking throwing his trash out. Lady up there is being like, "Yo, Jack, don't go out. There's a fucking raptor down there, dude." You're like, "Okay, gotcha, bro." Just <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's, that's what i want to see that's what jurassic world dominion should have done we should have seen Jack, yeah i mean those, those like isolated ground, story, boots in the ground being like i can't throw out my trash because there's two raptors outside god damn it my house smells like shit because they've been outside <laughs> for the past fucking month yeah. you know what i mean like that's that's what i want to see yeah that's it there's laws on when you can put like out here not in the shared areas but in the suburban houses you know it's like you don't put your garbage on until like 5 a.m or something because of raccoons bears yep. mountain lions sometimes you know whatever it is and i feel like yeah that's a that's one way like certain areas of the way in costa rica they don't put their trash out until uh, 6 a.m because of raptors so, <laughs> yeah not, is everywhere compies is actually if well, that's actually a way that were there any compies there were at lockwood manor that escaped yes so yeah, compies are, 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 you can imagine that they would breed like rabbits almost. That would be a dinosaur that would be very hard to actually maintain. Yeah, they'd be eating and chicken all over the place. If their bites, like we learn in, we, we assume in the Lost World, their bites have some sort of numbing agent or, mm-hmm. or paralyzing agent or something to them. Because Dita went down like, <laughs> he just mm-hmm. went down. Uh, swarms thousands and thousands of compies running around mainland america like north america that would actually be a instead of a, pigeons they'd be compies problem. in new york it'd be like the piranha yeah, piranha movies anyone that mm, gets yeah. swarmed by a load of compies yeah it would be like piranhas on land yeah in <laughs> <laughs> they've evolved yeah i mean we would be, like swim. City, it would be like the 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 compies are getting smarter than humans there's now more compies oh my world. god they have their oh my god that would be civilization insane. of compies i see where we're going with this now oh my god yeah have you That'd seen have you seen rat have you seen that documentary rats 20 the guy yes. who made um super size me he made rats and it's about globally but mostly new york city and how the rat like problem is a real problem though. the if, rats like they just can't get ahead of it the rats just, like, in new york are very are are bad yeah you guys ever seen and a picture getting of big, a big uh, yeah, they're getting big <laughs> some pictures i've seen you can imagine like rap, raptors <laughs> take over the tunnels and basically the entirety of the city 
<laughs> become like trapdoor raptors from have y'all seen spread. have y'all like seen that. mimic the it's i think it's guillermo del toro the cockroaches in new york city movie have y'all seen that Mm-mm. and oh, like so good. the plot of the movie i don't want to spoil it too much but the plot of the movie is that there are like these cockroaches in the u.s or it's maybe it's worldwide i don't remember but they are spreading some disease that can only go to like young children and babies and so they figure out a way to kill these co- they figure out a way to deal with these cockroaches but in reality they just go deeper into the subway and evolve into these monsters um and like that makes me think of some way (laughs) it's it the first one is actually really good um the the sequels are super weird um but my point though is like let's say there's these compies or these dinosaurs in an ecosystem and they're spreading some virus or problem or something and what we do to handle it actually makes it worse <laughs> imagine that mm-hmm. do you we think we'll ever see a pandemic like a virus movie though like considering we had a pandemic like, i always feel like we're never going to see that because it's going to be like oh that's Asis, so lazy you know what i mean Asis, you were saying last time you were talking last time um about the thing whatever was removed from dominion remember and maybe yeah, it was so the virus i always thing? felt like remember how we always heard during the pandemic delay that they went back and removed something from the script. I always felt like that was some sort of nod to DX. Uh, I always felt it was appropriate to remove it, especially during the cli- current climate at the time. It would have felt you cheap know, or, you know what I mean? Thinking about it, it, it was a really good point, but thinking about it, maybe it was just they expanded the locusts and the locusts were... But specifically, were, they took something out, not, though. Not killing more people, but like like destroying a lot more of the world and it was becoming like where we would have a couple oh, okay. scenes on the news of like crowds of people like cli- queuing for food and oh, stuff yeah. because of the you know, you know what i mean maybe, maybe they yeah. were like the sensitivities around that too sensitive 100%. maybe it was just locust related that makes which is why now people are like well i didn't want a locust movie i wanted a dinosaur movie. But the, the well you really is... could have gotten much more of a locust movie <laughs> we know that yeah, could have been more could have been locust park i would have liked that park. we would have uh we know that for a fact that in the lost world that they were at least I don't know, planning or, or at least mentioning DX, because there's DX all over the production material, all over the marketing, all over the toys mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So I imagine that the pencil cases, the backpacks, it's it a was prominent everywhere. novel. It's a prominent thing in the Lost World novel, too. So it's not like it's a small element. So they, they couldn't have overlooked it for so many years at this point. You have to imagine that they've at least toyed with bringing it into some sort of <clears> storyline, <throat> especially with the name like Extinction and things JP3, like that. JP3, man. Exactly. So you think that. I could easily see them going back to because now that enough time has passed, I think that you can kind of go, kind of go back into that whole topic and not. The problem is cheap. The problem is you couldn't go back in time to like anywhere past or pre Jurassic. I guess at this point, past Jurassic Park, but pre Jurassic World, and do a DX pandemic that threatens the humankind because <laughs> we've already seen. The we've world. obviously made it past that. <laughs> Yeah. If if it got real bad, it would have then to be a Jurassic sequel, World probably wouldn't have happened. It would have to be a sequel. Part. It'd be like now that the dinosaurs are so widespread in the world, maybe they're interacting with the environment. They've evolved to such a point that they're they've developed a disease. It's contagious. It's gonna kill either us or local wildlife. We have to do something. Maybe I could see that being a legitimate story mm-hmm. to tell. That's the thing. Like, what's the legitimate story to tell? It has to be something where these expanded dinosaurs are now either being an issue or someone's but then like that would sort of story about someone wrangling dinosaurs they just can't be yeah that would sort of build on the whole wrangle yeah that would sort of build on the whole locust idea of like these things we've created are affecting our ecosystem Mm -hmm. and then they could sort of say oh now like maybe the part of the story is like okay remember how the locusts behaved and what a big deal those were like this is even bigger than that and it's affecting our uh it's affecting where we live essentially like no. something even but, as simple as like all the herbivores in the world are eating like a specific plant and then the, the bees can't pollinate that plant and because of that like the whole chain uh, yeah, yeah, reaction yeah. everything the food we the food chain would collapse eventually maybe that's like kind of an issue that's like such an obvious like it's so obvious that's like and the yeah. are obviously going to cause an ecological issue like, it's david clear. kep david kep is good in his, in his like novels lately too at like handling these big sci-fi concepts that are like can go global Mm -hmm. so if there's something like that i would be very excited for david for david kept's handling of that so yeah i think there's 
they definitely to a Caesar's point they obviously played with the idea back in ap3 i don't know if i could bring everybody's attention to those original jurassic park 3 concept posters but they definitely hint at that right um i'm obsessed with them right now i can't stop looking at them <laughs> but uh that's the kind of that that we said at the start but that's kind of the era that's what i'm hoping for but yeah if it's if it's post dominion which it very likely is I just feel like i made a point in one of the outpost videos kind of has to be post dominion you feel like the studio want that because they've just spent billions mm -hmm. establishing this new era mm -hmm. and it's like we're going back in time you know it's like i feel like they want to go forward well hang on a second i don't know about that i don't think i don't think it's a guaranteed billion anymore especially with the returns that we've been seeing in the last three movies i think you have to be expecting in the 500 to 800 million at this point especially with the way modern blockbusters have gone I'm not underestimating it, but I've definitely been paying attention. No, but they've definitely seen. No, I no, think no. I think it depends. Diminishing returns now. Finally. I think it depends how much they hype it up, and how they handle the marketing, and how they present it, and what it's called, and what it's called is an important one because you think yeah. as well. It's Gareth <clears throat> Edwards' next movie. It's not just the next Jurassic. It is Gareth Edwards' next movie. That is another pull from the director of. <laughs> Gareth yeah. Park. He also talks about it as a Jurassic as Park John movie. Hammond. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yeah, Gareth Edwards no, will be one, in this movie. No, just one thing, Aziz. Aziz, just one thing as to what you were saying about, you know, it has like the obvious story is kind of how how all this genetic engineering and tampering is going to actually affect humankind. And again, going back to that idea, but having having compies that were bred on Isla Sorna in very specific conditions from sixty five million years. dominate New York City over this breeding and breeding and breeding and breeding and breeding <clears throat> living in tunnels and sewers they're going to change so imagine this isn't what i want but imagine <laughs> a, a very sciencey way of looking at it. it would be the compies would morph and change shape and would slowly evolve to adapt to the environment so they wouldn't necessarily have long legs anymore right they would be crawling around the tunnels their front legs would might come down a little bit right and how fucked up and freaky would that be to see how these <clears throat> dinosaurs would kind of adapt to the world in a negative quadrupedal like compies shouldn't have created them in the first place because now now there's these monsters running around the tunnels but they've just kind of evolved that way you know i don't know i think that that's certainly a, a creepy as and that, a way of that concept to be yeah that concept can be applied to like so many situations in the world with dinosaurs that are in new environments like how would they evolve and um oh. <clears throat> so super yeah, like in captivity yeah, any animal kept in captive like alligators that are kept in captivity don't they can form wrong you know like yeah. they're not growing in the right environment same with anything you've seen it with bears and polar bears and people that have tigers when they shouldn't and they don't have space for a tiger so it grows up in an apartment and it's like a deformed tiger at this point because it's not had the chance to actually evolve properly it's not had the right diet yeah you can imagine the people would have these weird looking dinosaurs that are almost like put it down because it's, <laughs> it's not happy it's like all the mass breeding of dogs that have led to puppies with skulls that push on their brain and it creates these dogs that aren't able to breathe properly and aren't able to like function properly like one of my dogs when i was young had that pressure on his brain from just breeding and overbreeding. same thing's gonna happen with dinosaurs like they're not gonna you know if they take that from the book as well about how the dinosaurs were kind of just like showing signs of deteriorating like they weren't stable almost i like that idea because that makes it worse you know with a genetic biological being starts shredding its dna everywhere like that yeah. could be a problem right that's a that could be a problem i don't know i think it's like spores in uh in um last of us like godzilla that... minus one godzilla skin is like toxic and shit oh yeah oh yeah he's like a radio he's yeah, like radiation, radiation skin or whatever dinosaurs are radioactive now you never know <laughs> godzilla probably <clears throat> that that's where the dino human hybrids are going to come from is the radiation <laughs> yeah that's it that's it <laughs> um this is what we all want this i want it yes. i want it give it to me <laughs> um i'm gonna put some of these taglines we've got oh yes fiercer faster free oh that's um dinosaurs evolve or die yes another one Raptors. From Jurassic Park 3. evolve or die terror evolves that's a good one uh -huh. um their time has come it's no. very ominous that one <laughs> whose time the dinosaurs time um july 18th it's a good one. Uh, <laughs> their world their rules Informative. my favorite actually was survival of the fittest i swear these old there's a jp3 joke where it's about human it's about dx for sure survival of the fittest 
Come on. Yeah. That's like that's like a Darwinism term, right? Is there a logo with like a vial? It's like what do you like Chaos what are you Reigns. About? That's the baby one. One of the baby ones has survival of the fittest. There's nothing in JP3 that makes me think only the baby, strongest a dead, survive. A dead skeletal one. baby in the logo. Nothing about JP3 says that. You know what I mean? They don't know exactly. that That's you made them old... in a test tube, okay? They gotta, they gotta hunt, they gotta eat, they, they gotta... gotta do this. <laughs> um, what didn't? That's the problem, Ryan. The movie didn't do that, though. True. On your face. And the... It's yeah, presented the very face. scientifically, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> How could we possibly have the slightest idea what to expect? Ryan, I gotta establish, I don't want that. I, if Jurassic <laughs> goes to New <laughs> If Jurassic goes to New York Everyone City, in the back. comments, get after Jack. He he does want this. <clears throat> yeah, Gareth gets it. <laughs> well, dinosaurs in Central Park. I almost want Anybody? you to get a tattoo of me now. I mean, there was that animated yes. thing, the dinosaurs in New York cartoon. Jurassic. Oh, yeah, we're back. A dinosaur story. That's yeah, a good that That's one. a great movie. And that was Spielberg too. There you go. Mm-hmm. Quetzalcoatlus. What's so Quetzalcoatlus. That's Whoa. true. <laughs> Quetzalcoatlus. In in Kep we trust. In Gareth we trust. In Scarjo we trust. I hope. Um, what I'm I, getting I, I, at. I, I, I hope. I hope she's not. I, I just. Whoa! Want hang on a second, Jack. Why? <laughs> Are you the only one well, who's not in? Like, who's not on board? See, I can see why they would have a. I can see why the casting. I can. I. I have nothing against her being. But I wanted like the prey treatment. It's like who's she? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Cool. And like other characters, you're like, I've never. I've seen them in stuff, but I don't know. This could be their break. I want that. You know, I want to go back to feeling of like who. Dude, who the hell is that? there might be a reason they're going for. <laughs> doesn't need a star. So big, it just doesn't need a star. It might need. It doesn't a star. need a star though. It just it, doesn't need I'll a big star. Jurassic the, never the needed that. Story is so different than what we're expecting from a Jurassic Park movie, it might need that star to be like, to help carry it over the edge, if that makes sense. We're all going to go see it, no problem. But if, what if it's like a Jurassic Park movie that's not quite Jurassic Park okay, anymore? Really. Like, what yeah. if it's not Jurassic Park anymore? Like, what if it's going to be pushing the uh, franchise in such a different direction that yeah. it essentially becomes like just a prehistoric bullshit? You know, I can, I can kind of almost, like, I do think they're just going to tie it to the world era and it's going to be a a follow on to Dominion in some sort of isolated story somewhere. But I could you wouldn't need that. Scarlett Johansson. Gareth is a really interesting choice to be like, we're sort of changing it. It's not Jurassic Park anymore. It is this new well, thing. And I've said it a thousand times, but I'm like, not, but... Kep, Kep makes it even more interesting as far like, because why would you? He's why would he you wrote... bring him back. Yeah. I mean, there has to be some sort of motivation with him, I think. Yeah. He is. But he died, didn't he? <laughs> He died. Yeah, he died on screen. I saw it. Yeah, it feels like it feels like the him being back signifies that they want to go back to the feeling of the first two. That's what it, it screams to me. I agree. But it might that might not be true at all, you know, because maybe you gotta think, we're the fans that grew up with the movies. We're not Steven Spielberg. So he doesn't look at Jurassic Park and the Lost World in the same way we do. He's the one leading the show. So I you know, I like to think that that's what is happening. And it's like, we want David Kep because we want that 90s Jurassic feel back. And he wrote the first two. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But the, well, the issue for me is that, you know, the people, because the, the producing, producing team are the same producing team that the three world movies and I disliked the three world movies. So I feel like those in charge are actually, are they doing more of the same? Yeah. Is it this, like, is this again, their movie or is it Kep David movie? Kep? And Gareth Edwards definitely give me hope, and I don't think Gareth would sign on to something where he's a director for hire. But obviously, as, as other people have said, he obviously liked the story and script enough to be like, "Yeah, I'll direct. I'll shoot that. Uh, that's good," you know. So I don't know. It's tough. I am in. I am on the fence as to whether or not it's. I'm confident enough in it because I worry about. Like I love Frank Marshall, but I worry about Frank Marshall's input Jurassic because, you know, like I said, I didn't like the world era, and that was his his stuff. So so we need Kathleen I'm Kennedy. Worried, back, is what you're saying. I just, just the Pat Crowley, Frank Marshall train of like the Bourne legacy, like the Bourne movies and the Jurassic three world movies. I'm like, I don't, that's not what I want. Yeah. And that's what they do. And that's what they did. Three world movies. So. I'm telling you, we need Kathleen Kennedy back. We need Steven Spielberg back. And then David Cap. I think that's the, the three. I'm not we've kidding. Got two out of, we've got two out of those three. I know. But yeah. Those rumors when it Kennedy was like, back. 
when the, when Kathleen was oh apparently she's getting fired from Lucasfilm that was like a year or two ago I was hoping it was, it was like true a, so she could come back to us <laughs> it would have been a come nice home alignment. Kathleen like, Kennedy we want you back. back she's back on Jurassic I would actually I, will, I want that I love so that because I was very gutted that she didn't just like when again we said that we say this about everything now or I do but when I was growing up watching the making of she was one of the many like heroes yeah she was like the mom of Jurassic. Like I was Jurassic like I want to be mom. her I want to be that she job. can I want to do that she can come keep her husband in check huh <laughs> yeah yeah she's like frank it's my turn now <laughs> i want that yeah I'm yeah, yeah you know what? i got star wars, home. Right? Leave star wars come back to the better franchise i said, uh, it. Yeah. I said it i said it <laughs> you don't really in. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is the snyder guy was like said something about how spielberg and others didn't want jurassic to go the direction of transformers and there was all that sort of reporting so I, th I mean i feel like that isn't something spielberg would say because as ryan said you know he is fine to this but also in the industry you don't really you don't badmouth the other films i don't even feel like i don't feel like he was necessarily yeah. trying to badmouth anything i think he was just saying they were just getting big and silly like that i don't know exactly it's a shit. yeah um I, I i have a feeling that the relationship that seems to have ended between colin university Spielberg, colin's no longer affiliated with the world era i think that does tell us a lot Hasn't about a yeah. thing about Jurassic how the long time. end was perceived the other thing is the dominion uh dominion uh dominion script leak notes from universal exec yeah oh, some bad english very but... telling <laughs> That was very telling. Universal are definitely very aware that there were issues with Jurassic World, um, Dominion. There were screenplay issues. At least this was Dominion focused. But I think there was a line in there about how these these running issues or something through this trip. You know, well, and there was definitely lines in there that indicated that studio exec specifically had been saying about these issues from the beginning. And it's like it's worrying because that aren't studio execs the ones that usually make the bad decisions yes <laughs> you're like you what's happening here? you read that those notes you're like what the hell <laughs> weren't those notes connected to kept or something with, uh, Were they connected to kept? weren't the notes what? connected to kept somehow no it was it was colin that's what i mean i don't think kept wrote anything past lost world he didn't write any of jp3 either i think he just it was like Kep was struggling. We thrown out the script. He consulted. Like rescue mission. I swear it was like no more than that. But yeah. I, mean, I don't know. No, I'm just we saying the the notes on the Dominion script wasn't. I maybe I'm wrong, but like I swear it was at Colin. It hadn't. I, I don't. Was it? Was there ties to? No, I mean like I he's the one who like provided the feedback that was in the notes <laughs> or something. <laughs> oh right. If that that's is the what case, I mean. I think we're in good hands. Um. I thought it was just a, a, an actual exec at uni. No, I mean, I think they, there was still an exec involved in like the per, whoever leaked it also. But like, I think some, I don't know, maybe it was just a rumor or something. But like, I feel like because and it was it was based on some of Kep's comments or something. I don't know. But maybe the studio all the way back then after Fallen Kingdom had been working with Kep to be like, start reviewing because you know spielberg's very protective of colin and colin is very protective of his screenplays we can't get in there you know we, <laughs> we can't pierce it so maybe they were like trying to work with kept to be like right review it and, and give us some i mean we'll, we'll post regardless you know, of maybe, the, you never know, like and maybe they developed something long ago I, yeah regardless of the circumstances though like i would love it if universal was like hey david we're thinking about future movies why don't you think of something think of some stories like regardless of the uh context like i that's fantastic <laughs> can i just but, say yeah. one thing i think jack and ryan you're the only ones who might be able to remember this remember during jp25 when we were at the airbnb uh we have a friend who told us some stuff about the script during early jw days a uh, fallen kingdom day sorry friend yeah for, i'll talk oh i know who you can't say her name oh yeah yeah, Caleb about... knows. yeah you got, oh, yeah, you, oh, shit, you got <laughs> we all know <laughs> Well, uh, Lisa S. No, that's too obvious. We'll say L. Simpson. Yes, L. L. Simpson, yes. <laughs> L. Simpson. So L. Simpson sh told us that it showed us some stuff. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of people try to come in and help the Fallen Kingdom script. A lot of people, including like prominent screenwriters, including like Frank Darabont. So I think Universal wow. was very aware, like, yo, this shit sucks. Colin was like, what do you mean? I've written pure gold. Yeah, <laughs> so we do it's know like... that since at least Fallen Kingdom, they were throwing some big name writers at this to try to realign it or add some stuff. So I actually think there's some some merit to that that theory. We know that for a fact. I would agree. Just came out yeah. of, of, of like the studio. Maybe they were like having talks with David. 
hey, David, David, can you come in for a chat? Just like maybe, you know, they were like trying to get the ball rolling on some other ideas. Yeah. And of course, the studio are thinking about the future. They probably posed it as like, we're doing spin offs, like, you know, the Marvel ones. Maybe they posed it as something like that. <laughs> David was like, okay, I'm not going to do that, but we'll do a, a Tim biopic or like an origin <laughs> story for Tim. <laughs> <clears throat> They run into us. <laughs> <laughs> we were the celebrities there. To be fair, yeah. they also did say, oh my God, look guys, it's the outpost. They did say that. Look at the outpost, <laughs> boys. We did them. say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. Who, me? Well, me? Colin, stop. True. Don't give me some pointers, though. We tried to, um, we tried to get an interview with Colin. <laughs> you want some good parental advice? Don't listen to me. <laughs> Can I just say one last thing I, uh, about David Kep before we move on? I've, I've been watching The Lost World the last couple of days. I got the 4K Blu-ray on that on my PS5. Last there. couple of days, it's just. <laughs> awesome. I'm not gonna lie to you. It is. It. It, it is. It is. So, <laughs> if you pay attention, I've never really paid attention to like the dialogue in between like Eddie and Ian Malcolm and like oh and uh, Nick really? Van Owen because I've noticed something for the first time yesterday. He was like cool. introducing Nick and Ian together. He was like. Uh, Nick, this is Ian. He's our uh, Ian. I was like, dude, this is amazing writing. Why have I not paid attention to this before? I'm like, dude, we're gonna get yes. this in the next That's movie. The thing Are about you Kev. Me? Let's yes. go. The thing about Kevin, there's so many quips, there's so many lines, but they're natural and yeah, they feel real. It's I, like, you don't even like notice. He it. just dives into that. You know, when they're marching away in the rain, he's like, you know, there was that chap who climbed Everest, and it just like he just like rolls into that story, but it doesn't it feel feels like so normal. Mm -hmm. It just feels so normal. It's just like that's what Roland's like. That's You'll the be... kind of guy. Everyone's got like a grandfather that just kind of like everyone has a memory of like a grandfather just like barreling all these. What about dude? Onions again. Like, Is the what like if you good? if you shoot yourself in the foot, <laughs> you'll be dead before you even realize you have an accident. Don't do that. Really dead before you realize. So you have also an the guy from West Wing. It's dude, like come it's, on. It's man. also the performances like. The performances are yeah. so good because they're so natural. I think Lost World might be a better movie than the Fallen Kingdom movie. I might reverse my <laughs> stance on that. I don't think anybody's going to disagree with you here. <laughs> okay, no, Listen, hang on assist, a second. Assist. No, no, no. I have, no, no. I have I the Lost Lord World is. ranked above Fallen Kingdom. Don't worry. It's a, <laughs> Lost World is above Fallen Kingdom oh, in my no, ranking. No, it's Don't not. It's no, it's not. It. Fallen Kingdom is above Lost World, 100%. But Lost World's getting Get up out. There. Let's, let's call it now. Let's call okay, it. Let's end the podcast. Well, listen, I'm getting... well, if, if the Lost World's in the bottom of a ditch right now, we'll just say it's made some steps to climb out of that ditch. In your own ditch. What you ditch? Know, you, you're a liar. You're a <laughs> you're, You are a closeted Lost World hater because you, well, even when we were in dress in 2015, when we were at the Here we go. thing, we woke up and you had Lost World on. You were like, no, I'm not watching it. Yeah, yeah because I'm it's the next watching. movie after Jurassic Park. You have to watch all of them in back to back order. Just play by itself. Just put it I it. always pick the Lost World because it's my least favorite movie. I'm like looking for a reason to be like, is this good? So I finally found like a, a thing yesterday. I was like, oh, that's pretty good. So <laughs> it's climbing its good? way up. So did you guys. Over days, <laughs> did I fell asleep with it? Okay. You were a newborn Jurassic fan that day. You were. Listen, there's a reason I stopped drinking because <laughs> drinking makes me say these bad, <laughs> wrong things. The reason it's been three years since I drank. Nah, I don't you drink no more, truth. boys and girls. I don't drink. Say truth. Truth. I talk <laughs> sense now. I talk sense. Lost World's at the bottom. <laughs> I talk sense. A couple beers in, and the and Lost World's his favorite movie. That's what happens. That's it. <laughs> it was a good cake, dude. It was a hey, good cake. Y'all, y'all know who wrote the Lost World? Y'all know who wrote that movie? Even Spielberg. It's the David. David Kep. And we're getting <laughs> we're getting another movie from him. We're getting another movie from him. That's the thing. I think it, it the one of the aspects is that there's the natural dialogue, the human characters. Like, uh, um, you know, Roland isn't a villain, but he's an antagonist, right? And he's so a character that a lot of us kind of like. But he's kind of a hunter. You don't like him, but you do. He's great, right? And it's just like I want that back. I don't want it to be like, oh, he's pulling dinosaur teeth, so you know he's a bad guy because he's look at him. He's pulling their teeth out. How hard he's got got it on a necklace, and it's just like, okay, you know, that was too. <laughs> you know what? Like I mentioned earlier, I, I agree who, with sorry? that. You're right, Ryan. You're 100 percent right with that, especially with the the gravitas. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what was that. Sorry. What do I want? Shakespeare. Ryan, say that again. Oh. <laughs> Ken Brana. Well, I think, look, Spielberg has that eye. Look at the casting of Eddie Carr and what, what had he been in? Yeah, he'd ha he'd done a lot, but he was like, you watch episodes of The West Wing and you're like, oh, I get it. 
I kind of get it now. Mm. Like I, I understand the casting. Same with like Wayne Knight. That's a bizarre casting choice, really, when you think about it. But he's the perfect like espionage guy. Yeah, just like you know, but Jack. I don't know. If you think Jack, about it, speaking like... of, sp sp oh, oh, well, oh. I see Spanish <laughs> oh, for a second. Oh, um, <laughs> Jack. Speaking of speaking of villains, did you want to talk about that rumor and sicky tea and all that? Oh, we should actually, but I, I'm conscious of time. Just one thing I do do want to say, just before we potentially get into that, is the final tagline from these Dress Part 3 concept posters, Please. which I would encourage you to all look at. The final tagline, which I haven't read out yet, is an instinct for destruction. So oh. I don't know, that one's probably the worst of the... That's Colin Trevorrow's yeah, let's, tagline. Let's talk about the, the rumor. And then... franchise. Yeah, so uh, very quickly, the guy V Scooper has been outed. Siki, um, <laughs> Siki basically fed him a lie. <laughs> and uh, he posted it just like just like that. So it, you, you now really, like we were taking everything with pinch, like big, big bits of salt, but um, salt cubes, you know, but it's obviously just, I still stand by the fact, I feel like he probably did have a source somewhere along the way, yeah. somewhere along the line, he probably does, because all of us have people saying stuff in our ear that people like people that work in an industry or people that work in somewhere that hear things down the line. Like, for example, one of my, like a few years ago, I was doing um, video and like graphic work for a, for a, a glasses age, like company that makes optic like an opticians right like a big one mm -hmm. and like yeah. i learned a lot about fallen kingdom through that job <laughs> because they were making fallen kingdom kids glasses oh, and there wow. were all this stuff came through with assets and oh. i've got all like the original like high-res blue like 4k renders and stuff all, because mm. it was like they were given to a glasses manufacturer to make glass it's like who the hell would think that but everybody has a source that's saying something like similar in their ear right mm -hmm. so i have a feeling like v scooper not everybody sorry a lot of people have sources that just like sometimes they hear stuff and you're like oh that could be true and it morphed along the way people like talking and i feel like that is probably played into v scooper he probably had somebody that was feeding him something and then <laughs> <laughs> you know nothing about this movie nothing is Don't confirmed really it's cathartic for us though you know what i mean like it's it's important for me to get my <laughs> jurassic energy out there in some sort of fashion i've got no one to talk jurassic about except these clowns on the internet here i talk to them about it. <laughs> absolutely That's exactly it, right? absolutely no one else uh, cares God, dude it's just literally five minutes talking and, and if anyone wants to listen they can listen that's it. I can only bring up the Jurassic Park three concept posters with my girlfriend so many times before. Like, just get out! I'm leaving you. <laughs> I'm like, sorry, sorry. It's just because you mentioned you mentioned the word evolve. You said evolve, and there's this poster that was made. <laughs> wow. <laughs> sorry, you said you said the word park, and there's this Jurassic Park three. <laughs> yeah. What if? Just scroll, scroll what left if and right. the? Uh... Just show me what you want. What if the new title, new uh, branding for the franchise was Jurassic World Evolved? Out. <laughs> yeah, no That'd be a good title, though. Yeah, really yeah. I'm okay with I'm, that. I've been out title. every single title so far that has been <laughs> part of the book. Um, <laughs> I, I, I just hope it has. I think it, at this point in time, it needs a name that is right or so doesn't even say Jurassic. I think that's the way they have to go because it's like, what do you say jurassic park 7 do you say jurassic world 4 it's like getting into the silly way so you could then subtitle it jurassic world or jurassic park but it's like which subtitle do you choose if it's a prequel do you choose park and it's like that messes it up maybe it just needs a new name maybe it needs something completely different and it just has the icon clever girl just, stop saying jurassic just <laughs> just another word like i but i don't know because it's overplayed you don't want it to be prey what, what does that mean oh <laughs> wow thanks boss this is why i don't write no more. i'm not a good writer I, I can't reason i went into brute work i'm a i'm a i'm a, I'm a thick i'm a blunt object <laughs> i gotta i gotta force my way through things <clears throat> well yeah two two things Embryo. they should have put they should have put the jurassic world subtitles ahead of jurassic world it should have been fallen kingdom Jurassic World should have been Dominion Jurassic World just like the Lost World Jurassic Park second of all um <clears throat> what if they put out Jurassic Park survival news when they did with the announcement and everything to see how people would react to park in the title I mean yeah I the response to that is important I think so the PlayStation I saw it because it came up in my YouTube PlayStation their posting of the Jurassic Park survival trailer was like news I was like that's actually pretty high for Jurassic yeah you know, mm -hmm. um, 
it's, you don't expect it to kind of hit those it's levels. It's a movie that game early. at the end of the day. People are going to have True. Some reservations. And it was announced that... negatively about it. Yeah, it was Game Awards, right? Exactly. It wasn't out. Yeah. No, it was, it was a, a, I think it was in December, wasn't it? Game Awards. Yeah, December. Yeah. Game Awards in Fort Lauderdale. That was it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jeff Keighley. So that, yeah, that obviously got some. But yeah, no, I just thought that was cool. I was like, 1.1 mil. I was like, okay, yeah, it's climbing. Like, general comments were like, um, all the front comments were like people that clearly weren't Jurassic fans being like, this is such an obvious idea for a game. Why hasn't it happened yet? Like, this is yeah. great. This is great. Yeah. great. It's like, the yeah, alien it isolation. Is. Like, people that play Alien Isolation, probably half of them, I mean, that's that, but weren't like Alien fans, so to speak. It was just like, that's a cool ass game idea. Like, I love, you know, I'm a big fan of, or not a big, I like that movie, so I'm going to play that. Yeah. that's important yeah and can you imagine if on the dress spot survival it gets a little writing credit it's david cat like okay something's happening here <laughs> imagine the next trailer has a credits thing at the end or something and there's david kep's name it's like okay now we're cooking now something's happening like now maya joshi okay well, right, what's going on yeah jurassic park that's exactly what i was going to say it was the 30th anniversary though so it is like Jurassic Park is like the most relevant thing in the Jurassic World Park timeline. Like Jurassic World Dominion came out like a couple of years ago. Then the most recent thing was the 30th anniversary of Jurassic Park, right? So I, I think mm -hmm. it's just the most like relevant thing. I think that's like why we're seeing more Jurassic Park than Jurassic World stuff, especially with the rumor of like the next Universal Studios Park being a Jurassic World thing and not a Jurassic Park thing. I think that's very telling. And the fact that we keep hearing rumors of the Florida park being changed into Jurassic World eventually and not staying Jurassic Park is very telling. I think we I think we're stuck in the Jurassic World timeline for a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so as we head towards perhaps closing this podcast, um any any final Jurassic thoughts in relation to any of that we were just saying or Jurassic Park survival? Uh, I I hope there isn't a tie between survival and the, like this staring and cross universe, like just do standalone shit. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't mean that they aren't connected, but it doesn't need to be this like injection of like, remember, remember Maya Joshi from the game? Like oh, she's here in the film. Like I don't need that. Right. We don't need that. Well, I want an um, Indian character on the film just, just for the record. Yeah. Well, we got one in the Lost World of Seas. Don't, don't, don't you? Yeah. Jason Hardy. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, um, prominent. But Indian no, no, Jason no. Hardy. Um, I, I, I know I'm this, I'm not trying to do a bit like the JP3 posters. Like I do hope that J, that David Kep has gone back to that era and whatever was inspiring that just cause the, they all have a visual style. That's like, you know how the lost world logo is the park logo, but it's deteriorated. It's eroded. It's lighter. That's what it's supposed to represent breaking down the crumbling, right? The, the most of the logos here that aren't the silver Spino logo are like almost like lit by a torch in an abandoned jungle like that spray painted onto a building or something you know and it's like it's like jurassic park 10 years on and that was the kind of vibe those logos were going for and i don't know there's something about that that screams or that just <clears throat> speaks to me as like that's the kind of visual i want i want that i want that feeling back because i feel like we never got it this is what i always had hoped for jp4 the world era never satisfied my craving there so i and it's a very hard craving like i don't really know what it is it's just like i want that feeling it's a certain back. aesthetic i know what you want so i want the same thing yeah, yeah. it's a certain it's like I buildings have to be a certain material do it i just i don't feel like anyone could do it that's the problem i worry like movies are just inherent i hope the industry is i hope in the making of we're not the same society as we were about then that's right? true we're a society but like for real like it's different so everything that comes out is different and i just worry that We've seen so many instances of movies trying to, like, The Matrix 4 was, like, garbage, like, pure garbage, and everybody knows it was. And it's like, you can't go back and recreate that stuff anymore. You just can't go back, and it just ruined, everything gets ruined. The Indiana Jones was garbage. Anything, they just ruin things, everything they do. And I, that's the worry with Jurassic and going back and, like, look, look, we're going back to the 90s. I'm like, I want that. I want it to be done right. David Kep, Gareth gives me a lot of hope. But the industry gives me no hope. So the way to Hollywood counter is. that, Jack, I will say that the X-Men 97 series that just dropped on Disney, it's a, basically redoing the aesthetic, the, the drawing, everything of the original X-Men animated series. 
It's called X Men ninety seven. Oh, wow. okay. And you can I mean there's videos online of the uh the title credits side by side and how similar they are is just basically been, you know, tweaked a little bit. The voice actors are for the majority of the part all the same. Um, you know, and it's I watched the first two episodes already and I think it's fantastic as a lover of the original one. Yeah. Um, so just to that, there could be some little hope with the nineties, you know, being yeah, popular yeah. if we're if they're looking for something to prove X Men, yeah, that, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, it shows definitely. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, and maybe I was gonna... there is with the game with survival being yeah you know, a nineties yeah, thing. Yeah. There could be people the tra- in there. The trailer, the trailer, like one hundred percent gave me that feeling I haven't felt for a long time. Yeah. And I watched that survival trailer when I saw it on the PlayStation thing. I was like, oh yeah, this trailer fucking rocks. Yeah. Like, it feels. <laughs> Yeah, you know, even with the Hammond voiceover and stuff, it's not overplayed. It's yeah. like that very. It's like that one teaser trailer that was made for Jurassic World, the TV spot that had, that had Hammond's voiceover, <laughs> and it had like it was like a horror teaser or something. And I was like, that's the one, the one they got right. Like, <laughs> the piano, um, the piano notes. Yeah, but maybe you're right. Yeah, the yeah, like almost like disoriented, mm-hmm. like um, distorted and weird. But yeah, to your point, Sam, I think. We are kind of reaching that point. I think Lucasfilm and the Star Wars era, they have realized some of their stuff landing with everyone. Mm-hmm. And there is a there is now another pivot that seems to be with like, okay, well, maybe we need to go back a little bit to what worked in the first place, not like trying to inject you know, different stuff. Yeah. Maybe that is the right timing for Jurassic to be like, that's where studio, yeah. Universal Studios mm-hmm. heads are at. That's where Spielberg's heads are at. That's where David Kep's at. Yeah. And they're all sat there with these JP3 concept posters up on the wall around. <laughs> and just papered movie, all of their walls. <laughs> and the... I was, yeah. was going to say, I hope that in the making of we get for Jurassic World 4 or like in promotional materials or something, it's like David Kep went back into his journals from 1995. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And took some old ideas he had. And like, that's where some of this came from. Um, yeah. yeah. But... I do hope so. I think, yeah, I think it's a good place to end it as well. I think. Yeah, no, I was going to say. I think. I think this is a good, good, uh, good spot to end this podcast. We've been going for like two hours now. <laughs> so. Yeah, I've, um, we rode the wave. I felt very. Uh, right. And nothing. Listen, this is the same yes. Jurassic Outpost that takes a freaking. 10 second teaser and makes it a 49 minute video. So don't worry, we're good at this. We're very good at this. Listen, this is, this is the thing. I feel like the energy that we had pre Jurassic World is back. In oh the yeah. World. I feel like maybe it's just me that feels that, but certain, and until, until something else happens that might swing it back in the other direction or something right now, I feel pretty positive. So I'm looking forward to it, but yeah. there are reservations. I want to leave everyone with before. one thing though. I've heard one thing. <laughs> oh, oh, all right. Play it on. Hey, Jack profit. said, Jack, I, we, we've talked about this a little bit before the pre pod, but we didn't want to make this a negative pod. We just we purposely to try to stay away from shitting on other things and trying to leave you guys with bad rumors. But the rumor we're hearing now, not great. The male lead that we've heard, Will Smith. <laughs> <laughs> there was, you know what? He, he needs a serious role. He needs something uh, to maybe. We heard I Am Legend 2 is getting pushed back a couple of years because they're having some script issues. That's what I've heard. I've heard, I've heard they had some script, is- script issues. They had to delay the movie. Michael B. Jordan's already taken other movies in that place. So Will Smith is currently free. Hey, you We've know heard what? that Universal is, uh, <laughs> they've been talking. It fits the 90s aesthetic we're talking about because we got the Independence Day and he was with <laughs> Jeff Goldblum. So let's just being of a raptor. Welcome, Welcome to, Earth. to Earth. Yeah, hey, exactly. Yeah. Welcome to Sauna, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that's the new so, tagline. Welcome to Sauna, bitch. Welcome to Sauna, bitch. <laughs> Welcome to Sauna, bitch. Um, <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you all yeah. for listening to episode 117 of the In General podcast titled Welcome to Sauna, bitch. <laughs> um thank you jack assis sam ryan for joining and uh check out drasticoutpost.com check out drasticoutpost on youtube for news and videos and uh silly dinosaur things um yeah so uh we'll see you in the next good one okay, good to talk to you guys all uh good good good, good all around Goodbye. boys and girls bye everybody goodbye okay. that was by far our silliest silliest one.